in three, two, one. <laughs> What's up, guys? My name is Carlos Berto. Thank you for stopping by this new podcast once again. Uh, the Relatable and Obtainable Podcast 004. Very interesting. Very fun. Very um, not even time-consuming. I think I'm just having fun uh, doing this podcast. Yesterday, had a special guest, a.k.a. my girlfriend, and we talked a lot about girls. Um, not girls as in other girls. As more in terms of asking her questions to help you guys out to talk to a girl um just listen to it it was pretty fun it was pretty fun having a guest i need another mic though i hope it wasn't too hard on you guys um looking at my face just reacting to what she was saying just listening that was my listening face and um yeah it's kind of it's just it's kind of tricky sharing a mic but all in all it was a good podcast it was uh the first of the month and i wanted to keep the ball going keep the ball rolling not have any excuse to not do something and i figured if i was gonna have fun doing it why not it's a new year new me oh there's the first burp of the month i want to thank oh my word Lacroix, who never sponsored me I'm just going to have to make my own canned water, dude, to be honest with you. I think that's what's going to be my next option is to make my own canned water because LaCroix is too uh, sophisticated for me and they don't respond to my emails or request or uh, ignore the fact that I spent a ton of money on buying uh, some of their products at Target uh, every week just to not hear a single thing, not even a thank you, more of like you better buy some LaCroix. That's what exactly what happened with LaCroix. I sent them an email. Check it out, man. People are, are sending me photos of LaCroix and blah, 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 blah. Gave them a rundown, and all of a sudden, they were like, well, yeah, we're LaCroix. So it's pretty gangster on their part. I respect it. Respect that for sure. Um, a, lot, a lot of uh, you know, people like myself try to take advantage of the situations, advantage of, of our own circumstances, advantage of, of our platform, and, <laughs> and try to, you know, they need some money too, need some capital. But anyways, LaCroix water any sponsors hit me up uh, anyways i was looking at high beast today i saw that um the boy kanye west is actually considering going or potentially going on a joe rogan podcast that's going to be super interesting uh for the simple fact that we already know what happens when kanye west has a platform we already saw what he did on sway in the morning which was uh pretty beast <laughs> and i mean it became a meme so i'm very interested to interested to see what's going to happen with Joe Rogan. Um, you know, I think that's going to be a really, really fun conversation and I want to see what kind of questions Joe Rogan has for him for sure. But also hopefully, uh, Kanye's off his meds so we could, um, get some entertainment. And, uh, I feel like it's going to be kind of like, I don't know, like we'll probably get like a Joey Diaz on cocaine or something like that. Um, which would be kind of fun. So definitely stoked for that. Uh, hopefully it actually happens. It was just a tweet that happened earlier today. Um, but hopefully we'll get it soon. So I don't know. See why not? I mean, Joe Rogan's podcast is sick. Shouts out to that dude, even though he doesn't know who the fuck I am. And, uh, just, you know, I definitely listen to it all the time. And my girlfriend listens to Joe Rogan, not my podcast, but yeah, guys. So other than that, what else is in the news? Um, I was looking at uh, some shoes today on, uh, you know, online, just looking at new releases for this year. Obviously, things are going crazy with just new collaborations. Uh, people are dropping hot items. People are dropping hot items, and they're, you know, they're releasing the new stuff, uh, the new flex. I've been seeing a lot of the shoes. Obviously, I've been in, in the shoe game not for that long as far as, like, shoe collecting, but when I was young, I was collecting a lot more shoes. I was, I was, you know, into the Jordans and into the Air Forces, into the Dunks, um, and all that good stuff. And I spent some money on that. And I just forgot. I, the funny thing about those shoes is like, I don't even know what happened to them. Like, I know I bought them. I had a bunch of Jordans and I just don't know what happened to them. They literally disappeared. I think I've seen them one time in the backyard, catching some sun, getting a little nice tan, losing its color. And all of a sudden they just disappeared. So I don't know what happened to them. I wish I would have kept them because they're obviously worth uh, some type of money now, and I probably would have been able to clean them up a little bit, wash them, put them in a dryer, put them on Craigslist and make a little bit of change, uh, but that wasn't the case, which is pretty sad, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but I also am looking at the shoes that are coming out, and I think that it's uh, it's pretty interesting just seeing how the, the, the shoe game is, is kind of swaying into 
you know, more of a, of a real, real synthetic, uh, materials. And, you know, back in the day, they used to lose, they used to use a lot of leather and, 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 and real good leather, leather hides. Um, and a little bit more work went into it. Even Nike, I think LaCroix on strike. You, you gave me too much gas, bro. Don't do LaCroix. Um, so anyways, <laughs> disappointed. I used to like you. Now I hate you. Um, the Nike Hirachi, the Edge, the new Hirachi, the TXT, and uh, I don't know. I, I like the I, I, I'm, the Hirachis are fun. They're cool because you know what a Hirachi, a Nike Hirachi looks like. They're sick, and you could just do so many different colorways to them, and they're just kind of like the thing. You know, like uh, I'm I, I'm a big fan of, of that style, of that look, of the aesthetic. It doesn't necessarily ever get old. You know, and any fresh pair of Hirachi is just a fresh pair of Hirachi and there'll always be a fresh pair of Hirachis and I feel like moving on to this new design um it's kind of cool I mean but at the same time I kind of see maybe they got their inspiration from like this crazy Hirachi um I could find a photo I'll put it up here but I, I I've seen this kind of like silhouette of Hirachi before and um these are like very traditional ones and I, I don't know if it's the same thing don't quote me or that's where this, the, the inspiration stemmed from but um you know obviously it has the sick neoprene um and the mesh going for it the sole is a little bit different as well it doesn't have that big thick um rubber kind of layering outside of it it's becoming a little bit more blended into the material into the neoprene uh there's nothing that's sticking out everything's kind of like put together in the shoe which is Okay, I mean, you definitely, like I, I'm saying, like, I think these brands are just like producing so many shoes as well, and they're like cutting costs all over, um, because, you know, obviously putting stuff into the combining neoprene and mesh is, is a lot easier than, you know, having uh, to assemble uh, four or five pieces into a shoe. So just having a, a, a single uh, silhouette that's all attached uh, rather than like, you know, the other Hirachi, the old one, if you guys look at the old Hirachis, where they have the uh, that rubber you know, piece that's surrounding the heel to like the midsole, um, you know, that, that's, that's assembly right there. That's time, that's money. And, uh, I think that the new Hirachi, uh, just kind of looks like a Presto to be honest with you. I don't know. I, I, I don't, it's, it's, it's a good looking shoe. I, but I don't know, like, I guess it has to be more for a person who just really is into Hirachis, but it kind of looks like, uh, it just looks too much of a running shoe. It's not like a, a stylish shoe. Like the other Hirachi was like a stylish shoe. It went with a lot. It was bulkier. There was a lot more like beef to it. The, the sole was a little bit better. The toe cap was completely different. Uh, it was a lot more chunkier, but it was also like a, a, a athletic shoe as well. But, you know, because it had the neoprene and that very lightweight uh, kind of vibe to it. So I definitely think that this one looks more of like a Presto. Uh, you don't really see Prestos being super uh stylish um but i mean they're trying to move forward with it i see the sole doesn't change much it's just a little bit but uh i think the overall like removing the layers to the hirachi just kind of you know doesn't make it a hirachi anymore um so i don't know i, I think that it's a pretty cool looking shoe i personally wouldn't buy one it's 110 dollars um but I don't know. I think that there's just other cool looking shoes. Like I think even the new Prestos, the Nike Prestos, uh, the React are looking way better than the than the new Hirachis. To be honest with you, these are sexy shoes right here. And um, yeah, the Rela the React Element 87s uh, Air Prestos are fire, dude. I saw these at at the at the Nike store, and this is I think like just this piece of layering right here that's out like this plastic and the rubber that's on it uh the sick thick sole like that just makes a shoe look so much better and i think everyone's kind of going towards that like chunkier thicker shoe and like being able to kind of put a neoprene uh in like a mesh and make it kind of like a axel uh not axel regato i think he's making some dope shoes too but um like yoshi yamamoto like he i mean he does uh, th this neoprene doesn't necessarily look like a flat like running shoe and he uses it and it looks so sick um and it's just yeah i think that uh i definitely think that the 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 actual presto is way better than the harachi now so i don't know what you guys think let me know which one you guys like the best but i definitely like that chunky sole and there's also that other uh nike that's coming out i forgot what it's called but 
it's the one for to walk. Uh, it, it's like the walking one. It's it's to put miles on it. It's, it's a waterproof shoe as well. And we could p- talk about that later. But the Nike Presto, solid. I ain't mad at that one. I'm not mad. I'd rather buy that one than the new Hirachi for sure. And um, yeah, even the laces. I don't know. They just look so much better. Just so much cleaner. Um, and yeah. I don't know. Nike, Nike's dope. I mean, Nike's coming out with some hot stuff. Uh, I, I saw their new Air Forces as well. The Air Forces are pretty cool. I forgot what they're called. And like I said, I'm not a hype beast. I just went in there to get some new white ones, and I saw the other ones. The female ones are actually hella sick. They look like boots. Um, I think just the silhouette on that, just the, just be being, just using the uh, you know the Air Force, the actual Air Force sole and um, the whole silhouette and creating something new from that silhouette that doesn't lose its integrity of the shape is is pretty fucking solid and i definitely think that um they should do more of those for men i think that um a lot of guys are taking a little bit more of a a step to the wild side you know what i'm saying they're not like they're not being too con- uh, uh conservative with with styles and they're not afraid to like experiment now especially with shoes like you see guys wearing crazy ass shoes now um so i think that nike should definitely you know p- put out some of the women air forces that they have uh for men's because pretty solid my friends now let's go ahead and move on to the next segment um which is what you know there's actually i want to talk about a few different things um i know that yesterday's podca- podcast was super long but uh, there's some drops that are happening this this month or this week essentially, and I want to talk about those. But I've been also finding out, and I've been also finding more Instagram pages that are pretty solid, and I definitely want to go through them with you guys and uh, share you guys as my what I found. Um, let's go ahead and see these sick Instagrams. I, I swear, like, uh, there's some sick people like on Instagram, dude. And I like every time I, f- I find a new page, I'm like, dude, I need to change my style up. I need to do something different. Um, and I think that's the hardest part is like staying faithful to your, to your, uh, to your aesthetic because you're so intrigued and, uh, inspired by someone else's, which, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, you know, but I mean, it's good because it's growing and it's bad because then you start spending money on, on clothes. Uh, but you know, we have this guy over here named Steely gentlemen hand them in i don't know i don't know how to pronounce that but it's right here and uh this dude's super sick um his dapper style is pretty clean it's all about details when you're dressing like this when you're dressing when you're suited and booted like this it's all about style uh, it's all about uh details you know what i'm saying i think it's all about like what you're wearing uh that gives a a, a trigger of originality you know that collar pop like the, the pocket squares for example here uh the texture of your blazer you know there's not too much you could do with a blazer that's going to make it super crazy um unless you're like uh messing with paneling or some type of, of closure or belting but other other than that like if it's it's a double breasted a single breasted a wide lapel a peak lapel a notch lapel there's not much you could really change so I always find it fascinating to see how people are like, there's so many, like you think about wearing a suit and it's so easy to wear a suit and you're like, okay, well you have so many options about uh, on wearing a suit on how you could style a suit. But if you are a beast at styling details and you're just going to be overall, you know, the champ, you know, and, 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 and that's, what's going to separate you from everyone else. Um, when it comes to shoes, when it comes to the shirt material, when it comes to the fabric that you're uh, rocking on in your suit, um, the socks that you're wearing no socks uh all that makes makes noise even accessorizing you know the hat uh the beard even some dudes i see like wearing like a blue suit but they just have like a crazy beard and they look super dope you're like whoa that's crazy um for those who can't grow beards like myself uh we have to rely on accessories maybe some rings some watches some just some bracelets and bangles uh (laughs) some some kind of accessorizing uh out of our pockets i don't know what 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 you have to do but essentially like this dude is super sick if you're into like that dapper that dapper look um as you can see his feet colorful he has a lot of uh different styles of suiting uh he mixes and matches uh colors and textures uh materials uh even the shoes like are pretty sick like he, he has a really subtle fashion taste but with a uh, very experienced like detailed person you know what i'm saying it's it's wild so 
definitely check this guy out. I mean, he has some casual looks like this is dope right here. Super casual. You know, he means business. Like I, 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 to me, like seeing these type of styles are the best ones. Like when you're just hanging out with like a vest like this, you know that this vest has a blazer and a pant to go with it. But the fact that he's just wearing this vest with a t-shirt and jeans and a hat, like he's just trying to take the day off. He's not trying to stunt as hard today. And that's that to me like that. That's, that's dope. Like for me, it's like that, you know, that dude has style for the simple fact that he's dressed down, but the pieces that he does have, it's like, yeah, you know, this dude has a sick wardrobe. Um, and even like this photo right here where he's just wearing a white t-shirt with the V neck. This reminds me of like, a like those old school, thick, uh, Stanford t-shirts that, you know what? I think everyone's using that very heavy cotton material. Um, now like los angeles apparel or whatever who has like a nine ounce or 10 ounce whatever uh cotton like very thick bulky doesn't move can't show nip very important uh but he has a hat and glasses it's just very well put together so you know there's more to this dude's style not just like this casual vibe You're like uh you know he could dress up if you want to essentially <laughs> the second photo the f second one that we have is this homie right here let's see i saved it i am what's his name m a i am alan nation right here this dude has 1300 posts he posts a lot he's a personal blogger 17 countries uh lived in three that's dope he has a blog he has uh all this good stuff he has an email he has all his little uh icon set up here if you want to check out his travels but his feed's pretty dope uh colorful doesn't necessarily take everything isn't style everything isn't um clothes it's not about him it's not of him but you could see that this dude does does like traveling he's into you know this architectural kind of vibe this environmental uh you know this like environment architect dude i don't know i don't know how to pronounce that what what can how can i say this it's like this dude's just a beast. Like he just goes to good places. Like his, the environments are on fleek. Like this dude knows what's up and he's lucky to be able to travel as much as he does because that just makes his Instagram way more worthy because then you go and you get to see his styles. You get to see what he likes, his captures, what he's seeing in real time. But then you also get to take a trip uh, with him. So you get to live vicariously through him as well, which is the best part of, you know, social media, I think, and being able to, uh, kind of ride someone's wave and, and, and ride, ride their journey as well, you know? So he has some cool photos, really sick style here. Um, yeah, I mean, you could tell it's a travel, a travel feed for sure, but I like the incorporation of style, um, up in the snow. Like he, he definitely has a crazy feed. It's very colorful. I guess the more you go, the more colorful it gets. I think maybe it's seasonal. This is dope. Look at this dude. He knows what's up. Like, damn i mean and and see like the mood is cool here but the mood changes which is pretty crazy see the effect of like from you see this going from like very colorful autumn summer spring like you could tell that this feed is like very well thought out and curated which you have to give it up to this dude because that's very hard to maintain and very hard to upkeep and even the fact that you're keeping up a, a feed like this like it's also like a, you have to really kind of calculate what you're taking photos of, you know, and what's a snap. Because when you are out and about and you, you know, it's kind of different when you, you think about like, I want to go to snow and get a photo with, with my Blake Hanley leather jacket. But when you're there, there's so much there. The environment just kind of uh, sucks you in that you're like, okay, I just need a photo. Uh, actually, I don't know what looks cool because, you know, the frame of the camera captures a uh, very insignificant of, of what you actually see so shouts out to this dude for very curate for curating his uh feed uh let's see this other dude you and the air here we have this other dude his name is unity yara i'm assuming his name is this yar but pretty dope feed i like these kinds of feeds like uh like i said they're just kind of like all over um they're consistent in the sense that they're high quality they're quality photos they're not like just a photo that he put up that he thought of and just said well i took a photo today i'm just gonna upload it it's more of it has like more of a purpose photo he has some pretty wild wild pictures in here um but the fact that this feed takes you on a trip 
and kind of like it, it kind of like these fees are cool because like I'm saying, it's very experimental. It takes you on a journey. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's the fun part about being on social media. It's like that, like I'm saying, like being able to take someone's journey uh, through their photos and, and, and being like, okay, this person was here last time. This person was here. This person will travel. This person uh, models or this person does this or this that. Like I think that's the fun part of, uh, of social media. So this dude's feed's pretty sick. Go check it out as well. Um, let's see. Who else? Living with the lens. Oh, this dude is dope right here, dude. Um, this one's super sick. Living with the lens, and he's a beast. He's from Munich, and I I actually followed him because he popped up on my explore page, and this photo is the one I saw right here. Um, look at this dude. It's so dope. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it says, but he's doing a giveaway. But just his feet i mean boom look at that dude insane i just like the fact that he's like mixing his black and white mood with his mood is like very dark you know but it's still you know he has that color pop right here which is pretty sick very elegant um it's a very masculine uh feed uh, and i just like how everything's coming together like look at this thing dude like I, it's just he, like this photo right here is super sick it's just his jacket he's not it's it's, it's details you know and, and i think when you respect details and fashion like you get to like this type of feed you know where it's not just about fanning out on someone's face or fanning out on someone's uh just style you know what i'm saying where it's like the style is in the sense where like you want to see the whole outfit it's more about like actually just seeing like the mood of the actual outfit, you know, and I think that's really sick. That's pretty hard to capture as well sometimes because you have to consider background. You have to consider where you're going to take a photo at when you want to, you know, dictate the mood from the outfit to and tie it to like your environment. I think that sometimes it's a little bit hard to do that and cultivate that um, that story, you know, and store in 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 a, in a photo format. So this dude is a legend. I, I mean. I do follow him, right? Better follow him. I'll follow him right now. You guys should definitely follow this guy as well. I mean, legit, 100%. Um, I wish I, I could, like, interview him in the, for the podcast and see what how he, like, gets this feed going like this. It's super sick. Shouts out to Living With The Lens. This dude's legit. I'm jealous. Um, Sabe. Let's see. This dude... This dude, uh, Gerard knows, uh, he's a beast as well. He's a model and, um, he's just living his life, dude. I, I like this feed too. I, I feel like models have a very sick life because one, obviously like, you know, you're a model, you don't have to worry about posing. You know how to pose, you know how to do this. And I feel like you know how to get the kind of mood that you want with your facial expression. And it kind of ties in everything. I feel like it, you just kind of have that kind of that gift, you know, where you're like, all right, well, all I need to do is look like this and this is going to dictate the mood and, and, and the happiness that is going to you know be vibrant from the, <laughs> it's just going to connect the environment and the and everything else you know and i think that that's pretty solid so this dude just travels all around the world i'm assuming modeling i don't really know he has dope hair i want to send him some chapter hair product and yeah, he just, it's like he's just having fun. I don't know if he takes his photos while he's shooting because it seems like his, uh, just like his photos, I don't know, like, I'm assuming that when you're a model, you just get these opportunities that not everyone else has, like being able to drive or ride in like a sick old school car and, uh, you know, just telling someone, can you just grab a picture of me for my Instagram? And like, of course, as long as you tag us. But I feel like it just looks very like nonchalant right here. He's just kind of like, yeah, I'm just hanging out and on a balcony reading my newspaper with some sick ass sunglasses. But the thing about this dude, he's a model. He obviously like, for me, it's like getting inspired on how to take photos, like posing or any, or any of that stuff. Obviously it all matters because when you're an influencer, you just don't want to look like you're doing nothing. So you know, you have to get inspiration from somewhere. And also it is important to have a certain type of pose or know how to pose to like, you know, dictate the mood of the photo. So to me, finding these like models like this dude, I, I don't know how big he is in, in the modeling world, uh, but I know that he knows what he's doing. So 
you know, just seeing how he's posing, seeing how he's doing his photos, I think helps me kind of find a mood as well and inspires me to like, you know, try to change my, try to change my style, you know what I'm saying? And enhance it and not just be so stale or, or, or just awkward in front of the camera, you know what I'm saying? Um, so this dude is definitely a beast. Shouts out to this guy. Um, check him out. Gerard knows. He definitely knows what he's doing. And, uh, who else do I have? I think that's it. That's the, uh, the Instagram, the Instagram, uh, does the Instagram exploration on my podcast right there. Um, solid, solid pieces, mate, solid pieces. So yeah, like I said, I, I like, I like to look at Instagram, obviously like to check out other people's style, other people's mood, their vibes. Uh, but then also just kind of learn, um, about like different techniques that I maybe am inspired by. Like, for example, like the guy who shoots, uh, with the flash, you know, where he just doesn't use lighting. He uses the flash on the camera. Like that looks super dope and it just makes everything look a little bit more, um, kind of like Grady Bunch vibe, you know, like you have that, like that, that style, that aesthetic where it's like, you may have green fern, a green velvet couch. If you use it with lighting or, you know, you won't be able to really see the texture or the natural like element that comes with having a velvet couch because it's going to be just uh, blown out by the lighting. So the flash kind of like helps illuminate that and pick up like certain things with the flash that, you know, natural lighting doesn't get. So obviously like seeing these type of Instagrams and following these people and, and, and going to explore page, like it's, it's just like doing research, you know, and, and, and also um, getting inspired to, to try new stuff. Uh, and seeing how people are doing it and maybe combining elements from a, f a professional model to uh, another influencer uh, or anything else, you know, or just like how they're taking photos and, and how they're creating their feeds. So I think it's very important to stay up to date, especially if you're trying to, you know, be in this realm of uh, of, uh, of job, you know, when you want to be an uh, influencer or whatever. But that's it, guys. So also I realized that there's going to be some six hottest drops, uh, this week or, you know, they, that were just released actually today. Um, some of you guys may be aware of these drops. Some of you guys may not be aware of these drops. Uh, I know that a lot of these drops are going to be pretty expensive, but they are fun to look at and they are fun to just kind of look at, to be inspired by. And, um, you know, for me, like taking a look at these fashion trends, these new things that are coming out, these new releases are mainly to just, uh, kind of enhance my style and also forecast like what I should buy, you know, or what I should be shopping for. Uh, sometimes I like to ride the fashion trend. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like to see what's fashion quote unquote for this week. And then I might just be like, okay, well, if I could find that somewhere else for cheaper, or if I could find that at a thrift store, then I'm on a hunt. So the Mason Margiela pre-spring 2019, obviously Mason Margiela, cool, digging it, dig the vibe for sure. Oops, went too far. Why am I going too far now? Get back Mason Margiela. Um, but we have this like oversized, um, what is this transitional period pieces oversized transitional transitional period pieces uh pretty sick pretty clean nothing too crazy nothing extraordinary except for the actual shoes um i think that when you buy mason margiela this this kind of this is not for it's either for the mason margiela enthusiast someone who um really is just a fan of the brand but i don't know like i, I really wouldn't spend that much money on mason margiela unless it was a piece that was insane. And these are collaborations actually that are coming out, which is collaborations. I, I'm a little bit for because the, um, they don't make as many of them. And obviously they're a little bit more exclusive, uh, but dropping, you know, a thousand dollars on a pair of pants, maybe, maybe not. I'd rather get them gifted or I'd rather find something that kind of looks like it. Um, not everyone has that type of bank account where they're going to be able to just cash out on, uh, you know, the whole collection for, or a few pieces of the season, but the shoes are su super cool right here. And I like the shoes for the simple fact that I know that making shoes are difficult, especially when they have this much construction going on and they obviously have a lot of capital, but it's, it's more about, it seems like they have like an air force kind of soul to them. They have little stars right there, but just the whole construction, the construction, uh, the constructing of a shoe is, is just kind of crazy when you find the molds. And I know that it's not easy to just produce, um, 
soles that are just going to be, you know, for 500 pairs and 900 pairs or 1,000 pairs. Uh, they usually ask for more. But obviously, when you have a lot of money, you could just be able to, you could buy whatever molds you want when you're like Mason Margella. It's not going to be anything because you'll sell a pair of shoes and it'll pay for itself. But um, I'm definitely a fan of like shoes when it comes to uh, collaborations because they're just a little bit more exclusive, they're a little bit more. Um, <sighs> There's just a, I feel like they're a little bit more of a collector's thing. And, and if you like shoes in general, like some people might want to collect blazers or bomber jackets or something like that. And that's your thing. But for me, I think it's, it's definitely shoes. Um, so I, the full collection isn't there. There's little bags here. The blazer is kind of sick, very clean blazer. Uh, the shoes, Mason Margiela shoes are just in caution tape, green or yellow, whatever. Um, cool. Not too crazy. Mason Margiela shouts out with the, they're available at HBX. Um, let's see. We have the uh, Do Shanghai Fall Winter 2018 Collection. Uh, Do. Let's see what's up with Do, son. They have the little parka. This constructed, constructed parka. Um, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, there's really no... Why? This is like, it doesn't want me to look at the collection or something. To be honest with you, I just feel like it's kind of hard to find something that... Um, seems worth the pennies you know what i'm saying where yeah i don't i don't know it, it's uh in my opinion it just kind of looks the same i feel like i could go on aliexpress and find this stuff and i know that a lot of you guys are probably gonna be mad at me because um they're you, i don't know someone's probably a fanatic of shopping these kind of things but to me it's like i don't know they, I, I don't I, I don't see anything from this dough collection that's like oh shit like it deserves my dough uh human race spring summer Human race is dope. This is really sick. Um, nine hundred bucks for a pair of, for a bomber, I think, or a t-shirt. Uh, the denim looks super dope. The jeans look nice. I think for sure denim are pretty important uh, in the wardrobe, and especially uh, denim lasts for a long time. So I, I wouldn't mind spending money on denim. Uh, I used to spend a lot of money on denim, but uh, I think designer denim kind of messed messed it up for me because I started buying a lot of designer denim. Obviously, that comes with, uh, you know, a kind of a timeline of expiration. And so once wearing Hudson's wasn't cool, wearing True Religions wasn't cool anymore, your money just went down the drain and the jeans are just very ir irrelevant and you can't really be caught slipping. Like I said, you can't be caught slipping with these with these with these things. You can't wear bonbons now and try to flex, you know, so you kind of have to take the L and be like, well, fuck, man, like I spent so much money on these designer jeans. Now I can't be wearing them. But these are kind of sick right here. When it comes to collaborations and, and like these this aesthetic right here, uh, human made, I think just in general, like even Theory or uh, G Star jeans, like those are going to be worth your while for sure. But this collection is pretty sick. Japanese craftsmanship, always American influences for sure. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty dope. Uh, this Nike uh, Cav EMPT, whatever, Nike collaboration capsule, that's pretty solid. I definitely like this jersey right here. I'm a big fan of jerseys. Um, Nike, like just jerseys in general, soccer jerseys, uh, football jerseys, old school, uh, champion jerseys. I definitely dig them for sure. I have like, uh, I have a few of them and I definitely like to buy them at a, at a thrift store. They're not that expensive. Some of them are the one I bought in Japan was a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it. These pieces, um, I just feel like jerseys are, are pretty dope because not that many people are rocking them like that. And not that many people are, are going to be experimental with, with wearing a jersey unless they're wearing it with jeans or something like that. But Or, you know, like that whole hype beast look where you're wearing it with, um, with uh, what's that called? With joggers or whatever. But I like to wear them with suits. So, dope. I'll definitely consider buying one of these uh, Nike collaborative capsule jerseys. Um, I wonder how much they're going to be. The other one is Psych Ward. I don't know about Psych Ward. This is literally just a jacket that has a name on it that says Psych. But yeah, you literally just created a uh, a zip up track top with a logo on it that says Psych World in blue. This is what I don't get. I, I just feel like if I were to, be, to collaborate, I don't know who Jim Longden is. Someone could let me know and help me out. But like these things are kind of like upset me um, because it's a i don't get it it's like you get a collaboration instead of doing something super epic you just put like a, a your, your name on it and i guess that's really cool but i guess that is also like i don't know like okay cool i get a, a, a fucking a zip up that's 
fucking whatever what what material is this like uh like a teflon no it's not teflon <laughs> what is that uh what is that material called where, where tents are made from um i forgot but you have that material and it just says psych world i guess the hype is real i mean if, if you if you carry that much clout then fuck it i mean i would too it's cheap screen print those motherfuckers monkey time pleasures um dope dope it's just like i don't know man i don't know this is cool i guess january the 5th pleasures embroidery perfect cargo pants you got it oversized pants I would just rather that's it. That's for the hype. That's for the hype beast. Let me know what what you guys are copping. What you guys are not copping. So I guess I'll just put it up there. But to me, it's like uh, if I were to buy a collection like that, I I don't know. It would have to be super dope. Like for me, like the big thing, the the fun one was uh, I don't have the bomber. Oh yeah, right here. G Star Mark Newson. Well worth it. Dope. Limited batch. Super sick bomber jacket never go into style never go out of style it's a bomber jacket uh it's silver it's noticeable it's well worth my money it has a bunch of patches on it, it has a bunch of embroidery on it it has a lot of wealth on it and so to me like that makes sense because you get to see it and if i'm going to shop for you know a collaboration i want people to know it's a collaboration not i don't know it's just like i wouldn't just buy something i just like i wouldn't buy a a a, a like if that bomber jacket just had G Star Mark Newson on it in the back, and it was four fifty or seven hundred, whatever, how much that was, I wouldn't buy it. I don't care. I'd be like, well, cool. Like that's 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 nice. Like you just literally stated your name, and that's it. Like it's not worth it, um, and it's not. It's just not worth my money and not worth anything. So I I don't know. I guess I don't know. Like, I guess we could open a discussion. What do you guys think about these type of collaborations with like hype beast and like these hype beast collaborations? Obviously a lot of the skater brands with um designer brands are coming out with stuff, but I, I don't know what uh why like I think golf is dope from uh, uh what's his name? Uh Tyler the Creator. He has some really cool aesthetics, uh super dope shoes. I think that his stuff is, is refined and also kind of makes a statement and you know that is his and you know that is uh it, it just looks dope like i think it just kind of combines very well with other pieces and not just like you know it's not just about the about his brand i think it's more about like the the creation of of uh of um of really cool designs too you know and and i like it i dig it i dig it it's a very like i fuck with it i'll buy i'll buy the uh, tyler creator ones more than i'll buy like uh something like like that uh, psych world because I don't want something I just say psych world I just feel like a designer whore you know but let me know what you guys think that's today's podcast for the obtainable and the relatable the relatable and the obtainable podcast guys don't forget to follow me on Instagram at by Carlos Roberto if you guys want to talk about the stuff that I talked about today just comment down below leave your uh leave your Instagram handles if you guys want me to check it out or if you guys have any um yeah, if you guys have any recommendations or, you know, caught a sick Instagram and want me to check it out, then comment down below. I'll be collecting those and uh, keeping them in the archive of my phones. And also, uh, yeah, feel free to share this podcast and let your friends know that there's a fashion podcast by Carlos Roberto and th my website, www.bycarlosroberto.com. You'll be able to find this and much more. Thank you. Shouts out to Chapter Hair for doing everything you did for me guys thank you guys for tuning in if you guys stayed here uh drop a um psych world's not that cool comment down below all right guys thanks the obtainable and the relatable checked out peace